Haircare just announced a new line of CF Express Type B cards that claim to have the best price per gigabyte, the best warranty, and to be as reliable and perform as well as the Angelbird AV Pro Mark II one terabyte CF Express card. But is it as reliable and does it have the same performance envelope as the Angelbird? Details coming up, but first I encourage you to subscribe and choose all notifications so that way you can stay up to date on all the latest camera gear, news, and rumors. Paragear released a new line of CF Express Type B cards, the Ultra line. It boasts a sustained write speed of 1.3 gigabytes per second and a maximum sustained read speed of 1.6 gigabytes per second. That's fast enough to support all the video modes on the Canon EOS R5, the Canon 1DX Mark III, Nikon Z9, the Canon EOS R5C, and the Panasonic GH6 to name a few. That's fast enough for 8K RAW at 30 frames per second, or 60 frames per second on the Nikon Z9 using Nikon RAW, 8K 120 frames per second on the Red V Raptor, and it can also capture 12K video. It comes in two terabytes and the one terabyte that I'll be testing in this video. Enough about the specs. We do have more specs to cover, but I'll get to those later. Right now, I want to get right to the outcomes. Does the one terabyte CF Express card by Pair Gear, the Ultra, deliver on its promises? How well does it perform in video? For the first test, I formatted the card using the Canon EOS R5, doing a low level format, and then I connected it to my Mac using the supplied Pair Gear CF Express card reader. I used the command line tool, F3 Write, to record to every block of the card in one gigabyte files until the card is full, reporting the average speed as it goes along. You can see that we're getting between 832 and 833 megabytes per second for much of the test. While slower than the advertised speed, this is common when testing on a standard computer. I see the same results with ProGrade and Angelbird, and it's simply because the card in the computer is competing with multiple resources. It's got a preemptive multitasking system. It's got multiple subsystems, services, and it's competing with other applications. Plus, there's the bus drivers and everything else. So it's pretty common that you're not going to see these advertised speeds on these high-end cards replicated in the software that you're testing. What they're designed for is to deliver that performance inside the camera where there's no bottleneck between the camera itself and the storage with the camera, the, the operating system of the camera being able to write and talk directly to the card, delivering those maximum sustain speeds. This test showed us several key results. The first being that as the card reaches its capacity, as it fills up, it slows down in that last 50 gigabytes or so. However, in this next test where I'm recording 8K RAW on the Canon EOS R5 at 30 frames per second, I'm able to record without any issues, although it does stop at that 30 minute mark because, well, of course, the Canon EOS R5 does have a 30 minute record limit. But I press record again and it kept going until the card filled up. No error message, nothing saying that the card was too slow or the camera having any issues whatsoever. And the second thing that this first test showed us is that it's able to record at a sustained write speed of 832 to 833 megabytes per second. And yes, we would see faster write speeds inside the camera. And I've got another test to test continuous RAW shortly, but that 832 to 833 megabytes throughout the entire card tells us one thing, that we could actually use the CF Express card as an SSD. We could edit our content right off of this CF Express card, which is another big plus. You don't have to waste time transferring information off the card. And that could potentially save you a lot of time. You don't have to transfer information off the card. You could edit the information right off the card, and that's a pretty big boon. I actually do that. I have a four terabyte CF Express card upstairs. It's by Angelbird, and I edit one hour and 90 minute films off that card without any issues. So that added performance is considerably faster than a SATA drive. Now let's give the Pair Gear CF Express Type B one terabyte ultra card the hardest test that I can give it, shooting lossless raw at 20 frames per second. With a Canon EOS R5, 20 frames per second lossless RAW results in about a transfer speed of 1.2 gigabytes per second. I remove the SD card and I'm shooting at a faster shutter speed in bright light. The test starts off well, but after three seconds, the camera starts buffering and pauses with busy messages before continuing to shoot again. Surprised? Yeah, I was too. At first I thought, well, maybe I've done something wrong. I've done this before when testing other CF Express cards, I accidentally leave a V30, V60, or V90 card inside the camera, and that will definitely slow things down. But I'm using the exact same camera that I was testing the Angelbird AV Pro Mark II, the one terabyte one earlier this winter. In February 2022, I tested the Angelbird one terabyte, two terabyte, 
and 4TB AV Pro Mark II CF Express Type B cards. And these cards also claim the same 1.3 gigabytes per second sustained write speed as the Pair Gear 1TB Ultra. The same R5 was able to shoot continuously with electronic shutter at 20 frames per second, and I went 20 seconds before stopping the test without any slowdown, as you can see here. Same camera, same lens, same shooting environment, and same settings, shooting 20 frames per second continuous in electronic mode on the same Canon EOS R5. Both of these cards are claiming the same 1300 megabytes per second. And that test, well, I, there's something I left out. In that test earlier this year, when I was recording 20 frames per second, I was shooting with RAW and JPEG, whereas with the Pair Gear, I was just shooting RAW. While the Pair Gear 1TB Ultra card can easily handle any video modem resolution that the Canon EOS R5 throws at it, 8K RAW at 30 frames per second, which is an average sustained write speed of 325 megabytes per second. And that's one of the fastest out there. The Nikon Z9 does obviously record faster. And of course, the Red V Raptor can record 800, or sorry, not 800, 8K 120 frames per second, which is around 850 megabytes per second. But that's not a fair test because if you're shooting with the Red V Raptor, you're also going to be shooting with Red V Raptor approved storage. Otherwise, you're going to get a warning. And that's, well, the last thing you're going to do on a set is shoot with unauthorized cards because if something goes wrong, it's your neck on the line. However, if you're shooting high speed continuous stills, raw without any JPEG, you're going to run into problems after three seconds. I got about 60 frames before finally the camera started buffering like crazy and the performance wasn't that great. I basically had to wait a second for it to allow me to shoot for another full three seconds again. Otherwise, I'd only get fractions of a second. The Pair Gear 1TB and 2TB Ultra CF Express cards are designed to operate in minus 10 to 70 degrees Celsius or 14 degrees to 158 degrees Fahrenheit. It has built-in overheat protection to stop recording if the temperature exceeds that 158 degrees or 70 degrees Celsius in order to protect the card. The 1TB and 2TB Ultra cards come with a five-year warranty and are available for sale now. The 1TB normally sells for $399, but it's currently on sale for $339.15 and $356.15 for the card and the card reader. The 2TB is also on sale, $509.15 and $526 for the card and the card reader. A word of caution here, it doesn't matter whether you buy ProGrade, AngelBird, or Pair Gear, whichever manufacturer's CF Express Type B card you purchase, do yourself a favor and get the supporting card reader. And there's a very good reason for that. If you want to maximize the performance of the card and eventually be able to do firmware updates or other things, you're not going to be able to do that if you don't have the card manufacturer's card reader. Now, that's not to say that this Pair Gear 1 terabyte CF Express card won't work in an AngelBird. It will. Or in a ProGrade card reader, because it will. I'm just saying that if you, you spent a lot of money on these cards, even at $339, you want to make sure you're maximizing your performance when you're connected to the computer. And of course, if they offer a firmware update, which I know AngelBird has done, you're going to need their own card company's manufacturer or the manufacturer's card reader to be able to apply that firmware update. Pair Gear's Ultra Line is a new line of CF Express cards, and I've only actually had this one terabyte card for about, well, three or four days at this point, and testing is ongoing. By the time you watch this video, I'll probably have tested this card for something like a week. And what's really important to know is no video review can possibly tell you how a card's going to last into the future. The only way is with continued use. I have reviewed and tested Pair Gear cards before, and after testing them, after putting out the video, I continued to use them for some six months to a year and didn't have any issues. However, the one terabyte is completely new. It's part of their Ultra line, and I'm going to continue to test it and use it as my go-to camera or as my go-to card for the next several months. But one thing you should be aware of, not only does the company have a five-year warranty, but they claim it has 50,000 PEs. Now, what does PE means? Well, those are program erase cycles. So essentially, you could write and completely write to every cell of this card 50,000 times before the card will reach its end of life. And what that means is every time you write something to a new block, it's going to store those bits. And the next time you go to change a bit in a given block, what it's going to do is then copy that information to a new empty block, erase everything in that block, and then write the updated information. So that's a pretty common practice with SSDs, MVMEs, the underlying technology in CF Express Type B card slots. 
So what does 50,000 PEs translate to? Well, it translates to something like over 10 years of continued use. So if you're using the card every day for, I don't know, 15 to 45 minutes of continued video use, then you can expect the card to last yourself about 10 years. And if it doesn't, well, you do have a five-year warranty, so you've definitely got that working in your favor. However, there are a few things of note. One is the temperature range from minus 10 up to 70 degrees Celsius or around 14 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, where I live in the greater Toronto area and a lot of places in Europe, it's pretty easy to get to minus 10. In fact, for the entire month of January, um, every night the temperature drops down to about minus 10. And quite often in the day, it can easily, easily go well below minus 10. I think, what was it, a few years ago, got down to minus 27 degrees Celsius, which Fahrenheit is, is, is still pretty cold. I think that's like minus 10 to minus 20 Fahrenheit. But once you drop below minus 20 degrees Celsius or minus 3 degrees Fahrenheit, Electronics can tend to break down, start to malfunction and not work, give up. And you see this a lot when they're doing uh, TV shows like Top Gear or The Grand Tour or documentaries. When they start to go into these really cold climates, you'll hear them talk about equipment failures, which is pretty common. So if you're going to be shooting at minus 20 or below or even minus 10 or below, then yeah, try to keep your equipment warm, at least at room temperature, until you start shooting. But in terms of reliability... I'm going to continue to shoot with this one terabyte over the next six months to a year alongside my Angelbird cards because only that way can I possibly tell you the reliability of these cards. You might be watching this video as soon as it's released or you might be watching it a year or even two years after I've recorded it. And if it's still up, well, that would indicate that what I've said in this video is mostly true. But if you have any questions, if you have any doubt, then ask me and I'll tell you how reliable this card is because I believe truth and honesty and transparency is very important. And any sort of test on anything that lasts a long time, whether it be the Canon R5, a car or storage, a review will only tell you how it performs fresh out of the box, brand new, unused by anybody else. In terms of long-term use and viability, well, that only comes with time. One thing of note, the weight of the card is definitely lighter than the Angel Bird or Pro Grade cards. And while I didn't have a scale <laughs> that was accurate enough to be able to weigh this and show the difference, it's definitely lighter. I don't see any problems with manufacturing, but I haven't dropped it yet. But, yeah, hold on a minute here. That was a three foot drop. Almost three feet. Yeah, no cracks or anything. And I dropped it that time on the corner. No problems. Okay, I get it. That's a silly test. The only way to really know how well this card holds up in time is in time. So if you have any questions, go ahead and drop them in the comment section down below. In the marketing material sent to me by Pergear, as well as the communications I had with them, it seems to me that they have their eyes set on Angelbird's new AV Pro Mark II CF Express Type B cards. Priced at $399, it's aimed to be cheaper than Angelbird's 1TB AV Pro Mark II. Well, that is until, of course, Angelbird dropped the price of their one terabyte to $349, with Pergear quickly following suit, lowering the price of their cards to $339. Will Angelbird continue their sale into December and beyond? While well, both cards, the Angelbird AV Pro Mark II and the Pergear one terabyte Ultra, can both handle 8K RAW, 30 frames per second, basically every video resolution and frame rate that the Canon EOS R5 can throw at it, and I have no doubt the Nikon Z9 as well. High-speed continuous still shooting is definitely their weakness. With the Canon EOS R5, I was only able to get three seconds of high-speed continuous shooting in electronic mode, which is 20 frames per second, and that was recording RAW, not RAW plus JPEG. And in a previous test early this year, running the Angelbird AV Pro Mark II, one terabyte card through the same test, only shooting RAW plus JPEG, I was able to get to 20 seconds before I ended the test. And with the Angelbird AV Pro Mark II, one terabyte on sale for $349, just about $10 higher than the Pergear 1TB Ultra, also on sale for $339. The Angelbird AV Pro Mark II just offers better value for both stills and video shooters. With everything else going up in price from cameras to lenses to cars to food, it's nice to see one technology that is not only getting better with age, but also coming down in price. And if you want to stay up to date on all the latest news and rumors regarding the trends in storage technologies or cameras and lenses, well, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button and choose all notifications. By choosing all notifications, as soon as I publish a new video like this one here, 
you'll get notified by YouTube so that way you can stay up to date on all the latest news and rumors. That saves you from scrubbing all the latest Twitter feeds, RSS feeds, your favorite YouTube channels, websites, print magazines, and other material. If time is money for you, go ahead and subscribe and choose all notifications. I cover all the major camera brands, all the major camera models, major technologies such as storage that affect our daily lives, all right here in one spot. So please subscribe, choose all notifications, and thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.